Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez, host of The Weekly Report, your update on programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The city's performance management staff presented the citizen satisfaction survey results to the city council during business session on July 18th. This annual survey tracks how satisfied residents are with city services. The results reveal major or significant improvements in 41 categories, with the greatest improvements in leadership, water services, parks and recreation, and solid waste. And there's one score that marks a history-making improvement. We are on the roof of City Hall with some sky-high news to share. The results of the annual Citizen Satisfaction Survey are out, and Kansas City has scored an impressive 75% in the category of rating Kansas City as an excellent or good place to live. That's a very impressive number. It is making history, plus it is up a dramatic 5% just since this time last year. City employees helped celebrate by going right across the street to Islas Davis Park and they formed a big plus five so that everyone could have an excellent visual representation of this high score. That is a direct reflection of the work that our employees have put in in response to the leadership provided by the council and the city manager in making changes that are directed towards our primary focus and that is making sure that we satisfy our customers, the citizens of Kansas City. Uh, our residents are good to tell us what they want, when they want it, and it's our job to respond and get the resources appropriately. So it's a nice partnership that everybody's put in place here. So we encourage folks when they've got an issue with city government, call 311 and uh, we'll get it responded. The citizen satisfaction scores saw significant improvement in 41 of the 98 questions. There was a big increase in the quality of elected leadership, which now stands at 51%, another high. Other areas showing big improvement include solid waste, parks and rec, and citizens notice that the city is now fixing water main breaks more quickly. I, I can tell you we've made huge progress. I used an example just last night. We got a, we got a tweet about a leaking fire hydrant at 10th and Central. Uh, some of you will probably remember a couple years ago, that leak might have gone on for a year or more. We fixed it overnight. And that's the kind of response that we want to be able to give each and every time there's an issue with the city government that we can respond in a time frame that our resources allow. Tell them on the front end, uh, under promise and over deliver is our goal. So we got 40, uh, 4,400 people doing that every day. It's a culture of customer service and I think we're going to keep that momentum going. Again, this all adds up to an impressive 75% of the people, three out of four residents, who think that Kansas City is a great place to live. On the roof of City Hall, I'm Chris Hernandez, Channel 2. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Take advantage of these fun activities at your city facilities while the summer is still in full swing. Come on over to Swope Park on Saturday, July 20th to celebrate National Parks and Recreation Month with family-friendly activities all day from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Some of the free events include Hike with a Naturalist, mini lessons in golf, kids' water, bugs, and fish workshop, Lady Zumba, a swimming pool party, and more. Visit kcparks.org for a full schedule. See how the polar bears keep cool during free day at the Kansas City Zoo for all Jackson and Clay County residents on Tuesday, July 30th. The zoo is open extended hours that day from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Bring a photo ID or utility bill for proof of residency. See more at kansascityzoo.org. Explore World of Cultures at the Ethnic Enrichment Festival the weekend of August 16th through the 18th in Swope Park. This event is one of the largest ethnic festivals in the country with more than 60 different cultures selling native foods and crafts and entertaining the crowds with music and dance. Admission is $3 for adults while children 12 and under get in free. Check out the schedule and learn about other events at the Parks and Recreation website at kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Watch my speed. Recognizing a Kansas City, Missouri police car might be getting a bit more difficult. 
Ford Crown Vicks have been driven by KCPD for over 25 years. However, production of this popular police cruiser has ended. Therefore, KCPD is looking at several new cars. Fleet Operations Commander, Captain Don Sight. The, the most important factor from our perspective, we're going to do a data-driven analysis of these vehicles where we can track from the amount of oil they utilize to the amount of uh, flu fluids put in the vehicle, uh, gasoline, etc., all those cost factors in addition to what the maintenance costs are. And then the bottom line is how durable these, these particular cars will be. So um, looking at it from that standpoint, uh, it's important that we, we do get uh, a fair amount of all different models that we're testing so we can put them all through the, the rigors of what we do every day in our, in our jobs. We have to de basically develop our own history and find out which works best for us. And there's different options for the different vehicles. There's all-wheel drive options, uh, there's still rear-wheel drive options, and there's maintenance costs and perspectives associated with each of those choices. We've created a survey for the officers to complete that have been driving the new cars thus far. Uh, we've gotten some preliminary results back and it involves things such as ergonomics, performance, handling, uh, the room of the vehicle, uh, how they think it operates, the accessibility of where the equipment's placed and things of that nature. But we need these cars driven for you know 90, 100, 120,000 miles. Uh, these are all new models to us. You know, there's, there's no history associated with these particular cars. So um, we're in a position in, in, our, in our police department where we drive cars for five, six, seven years. Out at our driving track, the new cars are put through their paces. Driving instructor, Scott Throckmorton. We do an ABS lockup with the cars. We're bringing them in at uh, 30 to 45 mile an hour in that range. Doing an emergency ABS lockup, and it's a repeated uh, practice where the officers uh, use the cars really hard. So there's a lot of forces that we're putting on the car, um, getting them to stop super fast, as fast as we possibly can, locking up the brakes. Any time that we would come up on a repair, uh, if we're seeing excessive wear, or excessive uh, problems with the cars, during our Nevo course, um, steering the cars through a very tight situation, doing it over and over and over, we ended up having a power steering pump overheat. Uh, that repeated use showed up faster than what it would ever show up in the field. So we experienced something like that. Uh, we relate that to uh, uh, our fleet and then fleet calls the manufacturer of the company and says there's anybody else experiencing any any kind of problems like that. Currently our police departments allowed us to have three of the four manufactured vehicles that's brand new out to the field. We have the Dodge, uh, the V6 and the Hemi. We have uh, the Ford Interceptor car, the Ford Interceptor SUV, and we uh, was at one time evaluating the Chevrolet Caprice. Typically, the department purchases 45 to 60 cars per year and have a fleet of almost 1,000 vehicles. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. The Health Department will be offering free Tdap booster for those 11 years old and older in three special clinics this July. Tdap is a booster that protects against tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, otherwise known as whooping cough. Many people don't realize that for, for some vaccinations, you will need at least one booster shot as an adult to protect yourself and those around you. In fact, with most of the local cases of pertussis in children that have been reported in recent years, the children were exposed to the illness through an adult who had either not been vaccinated or who had not had a booster. Sadly, pertussis can be deadly for children, so getting a pertussis booster is an important step to help protect your children and family members. With tetanus, you need to get a booster every 10 years. It does not spread from person to person like pertussis, but rather can be caused by puncture wounds, scrapes, or cuts by rusty objects. Tetanus can also cause severe illness, starting with the most common symptom of lockjaw. To help you protect yourself and those around you from these illnesses, the health department will hold these three special clinics on Thursday mornings, July 11th, 18th, and 25th at our facility at 2400 Troost Avenue. For more information on these clinics, you can call us at 816-513-6108 or send us an email at health at kcmo.org. That's H-E-A-L-T-H -E at kcmo.org. 
The Public Improvements Advisory Committee, also called PIAC, is a 13-person committee that collects resident input regarding public improvements and then makes recommendations to the Mayor and City Council. PIAC invites residents to attend its upcoming neighborhood hearings, which are scheduled throughout the summer. The next hearings will take place on Tuesday, July 23rd at 6.30 p.m. That's at Liberty Memorial. Then on Thursday, July 25th at 6.30 p.m., it will be held at the Park Hill Education Center. For a complete listing of PIAC hearings, please visit kcmo.org slash PIAC. The city is accepting nominations for its annual Good Neighbor Award program. This award recognizes residents who go above and beyond to help their community and their neighbors. To nominate a good neighbor, residents may contact the 311 call center or fill out an online nomination form by visiting kcmo.org slash NHS and clicking on the Good Neighbor Award link. Good Neighbor Award winners will be presented on October 1st at the Kansas City United Against Crime event. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week in Kansas City. I'm Chris Hernandez, host of The Weekly Report here on Channel 2. A group of community leaders appointed by the mayor are studying whether or not they should make changes at KCI. So they've been going to something they call airport school. They just held the third class and this class focused on capital improvements. Uh, but again, these, these projects are now getting a little bit old. The chillers were 96 vintage, the boilers are 2000, the roofing is 2000. Uh, We'll go on to the next slide to show the infrastructure that we haven't touched. That's really what the next part is, what we have not touched. And as you guys have noted, we would like to improve the check baggage screening. We would like everybody to be in line. Uh, Airside has infrastructure that hasn't been touched. Uh, the de-icing systems, need, we need to address the de-icing. We have issues with the terminal parking garages being full, or at least the B terminal garage being full. We need to address that, and there are ways to do that. Commissioners plan to take a tour of KCI to see the capital improvement needs for themselves, as well as to visualize how changes could be implemented. As community leaders study whether to switch to a single terminal at KCI, they are listening to incoming comments and planning a big public outreach effort. We think that airport school will uh, probably you know, wrap up sometime uh, you know, through August. And we'll get into the, uh, the other aspects. If you would like to see the entire meeting, we'll have a link to that video posted on the city's website at kcmo.org. I'm Chris Hernandez for Channel 2.